Hi Sarah, it's Thursday, August 7th. And today I want to talk about a lot of things that you talked about. I hope that's okay. Your video was really great because this book sounds like a lot of things that I've actually talked about, um, but all condensed, which is awesome. Still Like an Artist is one of my favorite phrases, mostly because I wanted to be a con artist when I was little, and so like a regular artist is still kind of like a con artist. I don't know if that came out the way I wanted it to. But for real though, we actually have talked about in some of my classes how as an artist it's your job to convince people that something that isn't real is real. That is your whole job, is to lie to people. <laughs> Whether you're making movies or you're doing artwork or whatever, your job is to convince people that this thing exists. A piano teacher I once had said this really awesome thing, and I wish I knew who said it originally so I could attribute it properly, but it went something like this. A good artist borrows, a great artist steals. The whole idea of that is that if you're a good artist, you borrow someone else's stuff. You just recreate something that's already been made. And that could be a good artist. But a great artist takes it a step further and they take something that someone else created and they make it their own. They steal it. They put their own impact on it. Which then makes it kind of like not stealing because it's now your thing that you've created just based on somebody else's thing. But it's true that when you find something worth stealing that you kind of start to emulate that and you incorporate it into your own style. So that's kind of what I live by usually, is a good artist borrows and a great artist steals. Now you also asked me what it would be like for me working in a creative field, which is interesting because we just talked about this in my class like two weeks ago. I said something to my teacher the other day about a conversation I'd had with someone where me working in an art related field, even if it's kind of a technical art field, I sometimes tell people about my schoolwork and what my assignment was that week or what we're doing in class and they're like, that's not real school. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's hard work. I don't care that we watch movie clips for three hours. I also had homework that I had to do and it was hard. I think sometimes they don't believe me. Regardless though, I didn't pick to be an accountant or a businesswoman because I knew I would be bored. I didn't want to pick something that I would hate doing. So one word of advice was to pick something that you love. If you don't love what you're doing, why are you doing it? Maybe you have a really good reason and that's fine. But if you don't, maybe you should be reconsidering what you've chosen. But my teacher talked about the fact that it's really easy for him to become a workaholic because he loves what he does. He, you know, would be animating all day at the studio and he would come home and he would want to work on his own projects. So he encourages us to have hobbies, to have things we do outside of the art world, which kind of actually helps us in the art world, but also keeps us from getting burnout. Another thing he talked about was like when you retire and he's like, I know you guys aren't thinking of retiring. I'm not even thinking of retiring yet. I'm still young. But there's people who work until they stop working or they work until they die. And you kind of fall into those two categories a lot of times where you are working this job and you just do the same thing all the time and then you retire and you kind of lost your purpose. Or alternatively, you work and you work and you work and then you just never retire and you just keep doing that until you die. With art, it's sometimes easier for us to fall into the second category where we just work and work and we do art all the time until we die. We often don't lose purpose, but we sometimes lose sight of what's important. <laughs> and so for me working in the creative field, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where I enjoy it. I like going to work. I enjoy my environment. And when I retire though, that's why it's important to have other hobbies, especially outside of the art world, because it gives you something to do when you're kind of done working. I also really want to read this book because I feel like it says a lot of things that I've been saying, but better. <laughs> One of my teachers have talked all the time about tapping into the river of art and really like stepping into that and immersing yourself in what other people have done and where they take their inspiration from, which is sort of like finding your genealogy. I think I've talked about it before, but I don't think I did it justice. You'll have to let me borrow this book because it sounds really interesting and I'd be interested in 10 things that nobody told you about living a creative life. Keep being authentically awesome.